Now, thank you everybody for attending and registering to join us on our most recent uh, webinar, the recent live event success roundtable. Um, and I know if you haven't attended any of our previous webinars, I just to give you a background on Hopskip. We are a platform designed by and for meeting event planners to be used internally, specializing strictly in sourcing, booking, and contracting of hotel room blocks and or meeting space. And I believe this is our sixth webinar in our series since the start of the pandemic. And we figured this was the most timely topic. So we have uh, Wendy Cavanaugh from GSAE, Michelle Bordermiller from Hyatt uh, Regency Savannah, and Jennifer Thompson um, from Visit Savannah all on our round table today. And in a couple of moments, I will allow them to introduce themselves and they will be speaking on all the different perspectives, excuse me. And we'll go to the next slide. So we're gonna be accomplishing two tasks today. First one, we wanna analyze how GSAE held a recent live event in August. Um, from the perspective of Wendy, the planner, um, <coughs> excuse me, Michelle, the hotelier, and Jennifer um, from the CBB. Because originally we did a spotlight with Wendy and GSAE and all the parties involved on how they were able to pull off a successful and safe event during the pandemic back in August. So we analyzed their annual meeting, it was really popular. We gave a perspective to even the attendees, but also all the parties that are currently in this webinar. So due to popular demand and the timeliness of this and events ramping back up and it's time for us to meet in person soon again, um, we wanna release this one. And then secondly, we wanna discuss how all parties be working together to hold events as we come to the end of the pandemic and these restrictions are easing at different times, different places, and how it is looking a little differently about how they held the event before and how they plan to hold successful safe events in the future. And we can go to the next slide. And before we begin, we're gonna do a quick poll. And this poll is going to be asking, um, when are we gonna be having our next face-to-face -face events? Just so we can gauge that metric. So that poll will be going out right now. We'll leave it up here about 30 seconds feel free to answer. And we will be including this data in our newsletters as well to share with the community. All right, thank you for answering the poll question. And we will be going to the next slide. Great results. Again, thank you all for your feedback on our last webinar and shaping our future webinars as well. And now we will get to, <clears throat> excuse me, introducing all the parties on our next slide. So we have Wendy Cavanaugh of GSAE. Wendy, love for you just to introduce yourself. Um, I'm the president of GSAE. And just to give everyone some context, not only did we do um, a meeting back in August in Savannah with the help of our partners, we also have um, an annual meeting planned for June 2nd through 4th in Chattanooga. Lovely. Thank you, Wendy. And then we have Mich Michelle Gordemaler from the High Regency Savannah. Michelle, love you to introduce yourself. Hi guys, I'm glad to be here today and look forward to talking about how we can keep um, successful meetings safe through all of the things that we've been through in the last year. Lovely. And then last but not least, we have Jennifer Thompson from Visit Savannah. Jennifer? Hi, I'm Jennifer. I am the Senior National Sales Manager with Visit Savannah um, and just excited to share how we're working with our hotels and our meeting planners to make everything come together and and flow nicely through the city during all all the challenges brilliant all right and let's go to our next slide so first question that we want to tackle is what were the top few things that made you feel confident that you were set up for success to hold a face-to-face -face event since the start of covid19 i'll leave that up to all the parties and tell from their perspectives. Um, I'll actually start and then I'll actually have um, Jen and Wendy chime in. Um, I know from the hotel perspective, you know, there's really kind of three big components. 
Um, and the first one was the pre-planning phase. It was pretty vital and critical um, where we had to set the right sets for the upcoming event. Um, and then the next big phase or the next big piece was creating a know before you go video. And this was to give the attendees kind of an idea of what to expect in the new COVID-19 protocols. Um, and that went from the arrival experience to the actual meeting timeframe to the guest room experience. Um, and then lastly, for, for the hotel's perspective is acquiring the GVAC accreditation and in combination with um, implementing a hygiene manager um, that was just gonna put all of those safety measures into place. Um, I can jump in with Michelle on that uh, about the video. Um, we did one as well. We also started, the city of Savannah started a Savannah pledge um, and streamed it out to all of our businesses, pledging that masks would be worn and hand sanitizer would be available and that we were city strong in making all of our shops and restaurants um, have, have the, set those limits. Um, we had over 818 businesses that pledged to, to be safe and join the Savannah Pledge. So within that framework, Within that framework, um, GSAE staff went down for our site visit um, and walked through not only what an attendee would experience and, and what Michelle captured so beautifully from check-in to grabbing coffee to what the restaurant and bar situation was. Um, but we took it a bit farther from our standpoint and literally walked the spaces as an attendee would, using elevators, using escalators, walking around um, outdoors to see how that would work if the elevators got crowded because you know we were limited to four at a time and one of our spaces was a little more challenging from an accessibility standpoint. And so that was that was a really key thing for us is to truly experience and walk through the entire agenda. Um, and, and that led to the planning that made for a smooth transition when people were actually on site. Um, that was just a, a real key for us to identify potential bottlenecks, um, things that we needed to do, such as staggered dismissals, um, making sure that our breaks were longer um, to avoid overcrowding in spaces. And again, using every possible a bit of space at the hotel so that we had plenty of elbow room to keep people comfortable. Brilliant. Great. Let's move on to the next uh, slide, next question. So question number two, how confident were GSAE, the higher Regency Savannah and Vince Savannah and the protocols that they implemented what steps were taken to be prepared for it? And how was the response from attendees on their comfortability? Michelle, you wanna go with that one first and again, we'll I chime absolutely, in. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I know that we, from the hotel perspective, we were super confident with the support of the Hyatt's global um, commitment and the city's safety pledge. Um, and we had that initial support was, was, was pretty vital and critical. Um, and we actually had to quit, you know, quickly um, get a very good, clear understanding of the CDC guidelines, along with the local mandates that were continuously changing. And so once, you, once we got our, our handle on that, um, we based all of our capacities and everything that we needed to take place, and we could we determined that we could have a successful meeting. And just to kind of give you a comparison, we, we um, 200 was our capacity um, that we came up with. Um, Pre-pandemic, we were at a 600 person, um, you know, mark. So you can see that that's less than half of where we originally were coming from, from our capacity standpoint. But, you know, understanding those, those guidelines and then being able to communicate it to our partners and to our client was, is, was really, really important. I'll let Jen and, and Wendy kind of chime in now. Um, I, I would just say, you know, because we did some offsite events, um, we really had to look at uh, 
busing and transportation and the, the function space that we used, which was um, huge with a, a great big lawn so that there were places for people to, to roam. But it kind of, again, goes back to our Savannah Safe Pledge and the businesses and the companies, the transportation, trolleys, offsite venues that all joined in with making it, making it work. I think that is a, a key point of the standpoint of everyone in, having buy-in to produce a safe meeting from not only what the Hyatt you know, had worked to, to implement on, on the ground level, but also we had buy-in from our attendees that they were committed to the protocols and acknowledging that they would follow the protocols that Michelle's group and Jen's group and, and GSAE had all agreed to. It was almost like a covenant of, we know these are the things at this point in time that can keep us safe. Um, and so that buy-in was really cool. And then in addition to the cleaning procedures that, that we communicated out that the hotel was doing, um, a couple of things that GSAE did. We did not have, we did have some exhibitors, um, small tabletops. We did not have any paper um, that, that was on an exhibit table or on a sponsor table. We had um, swag bags for the first time in a really long time. And every vendor and every sponsor that wanted to put something in that we pre-stuffed them with hand sanitizer, gloves, huge protocols in place um, from that, that kind of hygiene theater was really important to us to, to kind of demonstrate that best practice at the time. Um, and the other, we partnered with folks to provide a safety kit that had two disposable masks, um, antiseptic wipes, hand sanitizer. Um, we also partnered with the person on the bag and it was huge, one of those huge logoed grocery bags that normally we would be like, we'll never fit all this stuff and we filled them. Um, so we were trying to arm people both with the information they needed, but also the tools they needed to feel comfortable about their experience while they were on site. Perfect, great answers all around. And then we'll move on to question three, which is, what are the hotels and CVB's safety protocols and how was the communication of them invaluable to making the event successful? I can start. Um, the, the communication, it was in, invaluable. Um, we, the three of us just worked together constantly and kind of at every corner, we would make another turn and, and try something else. So things were constantly changing and evolving to, to get us to the point where everybody was comfortable and we knew that we could handle the guests coming in. Absolutely. And our messaging, again, that coordination of the messaging everything that Michelle or Jen or I sent out, we all echoed one another and reinforced the, the safety protocols um, that, that we wanted to communicate. So that having that, again, that coordination and it's almost being on brand all the time, um, but, but our messaging really did um, just mirror one another to the extent that it was over and over and over. Um, so there was no question what the protocols were going to be when people arrived. And I, it looks like we just got um, someone to give examples, and I can actually do that. So from a more of a detailed perspective from the hotel, what we did is as people arrived, we actually had the check-in at Keyless um, application through our app, through, through World of Hyatt, which was really, really great. So there was very, very little interaction. Um, and then, of course, we had to install, and this was very, this was very when we were trying to all figure this out as we came along. And so we installed all the plexiglass guards throughout the hotel. So front desk, grab and go coffee, registration counters. As um, Wendy mentioned, the exhibit, the very few exhibit tables, we have plexiglass. Um, that was to ensure the safety, not only for the attendees, but also for our Hyatt colleagues. Um, and then some other things that were really critical and, and key were um, signage. You know, when you go through an airport, you, you just rely on it to tell you how to go and where to go. And that was something that we 
put into effect is, is give more information than you've ever done before on the elevator capacity, on the staggering of six feet apart from the elevator banks to the check-in counters to uh, you know, the restaurant and the bar. So those were all pretty, and we did that through floor decals. And then from the event side, you know, we, again, and we've kind of touched on this, but we had hand sanitizer stations everywhere. So they were on the public space, the lobby, every, um, by every elevator bank on every single floor, by every other, um, in every meeting room inside and outside. So there was never an opportunity that you didn't have a chance to sanitize. Um, and then I don't know if there's anything else that I'm missing that maybe Jen or Wendy want to chime in, but those are just some of the, the critical things that we, we had and in, took into place. And we also extensively used our app, um, our, our meeting app, and that had everything from a self-assessment that we asked people to, to run through every morning. Um, we had a lot of signage that echoed the governor of Georgia's orders about not entering an establishment if you have any symptoms, if you had a cough. Um, we literally cut and pasted it directly from the governor's orders and had that everywhere. We had masking reminder signage everywhere, which we loved. Um, there was an AMS company that had put out some really cute cartoon ones that were a little friendlier than just mask up. Um, but we really, like I said, we put a lot of information into the app um, that just continuously communicating the expectations and continuously updating those um, as more information was available because the meeting we planned in for May that we moved to August was an entirely different event than, than the original thoughts. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, for catching that question and, and addressing it. Let's move on to the next slide. So question number four, what was the process or how was the process of creating physically distanced room layouts and space to room night ratio? Michelle, do you want me to take this one and then you'll address this? Absolutely, space? go ahead, Wendy. Um, from, so we, we had a couple of um, diagrams that uh, several industry groups had put out of suggested diagrams, but I, I'm sure there are other planners that are on watching us now. I need to walk a space. I need to see it. I need to physically sit and, and feel, you know, and, and measure. And so what the Hyatt did was brilliant. They actually had sample room sets ready for my site visit. And so we were able to experience the space, but also debate the merits. Is this safe? But is this also conducive to an educational environment? Um, can everybody see, does the speaker well, they need to be masked while they're presenting based on how your AV is up. Um, it, it, you know, is there enough room for the AV folks to come in and clean in between? Um, are you using soft linens, which you need to change out between every event, every breakout versus using a hard top that's just being wiped down? Um, and so we really worked hard to make it work for the hotel, work for the attendees, work for the staffers and work for our AV group. Um, but again, having those, and I love the diagrams that we came up with. Um, they're actually available on our website as well in our meetings toolkit. Um, and, and again, we, we had um, rounds as well as classrooms set up. Michelle, just, now you can talk about the space ratios because I'm not doing that math. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tackle that one. I'll tackle that one. Well, you know, in, in the last year, that has actually not been a concern of, uh, from our hotel's perspective. We, you know, first and foremost, safety first. What can we do to make everyone feel safe and comfortable and meet within the CDC guidelines, as well as Hyatt's global commitment, and as well as the local and state mandates? So we, you know, at this point, and, and the 54 meetings that we've actually already had since last year that have taken place, you know, we continue to, you know, have the conversation. If you're, we're going to, so for instance, you know, Wendy's group, I mean, they, 
they kept all the same space and the room block looked a little bit different, but it's very important for our hotel was to give everyone the comfortability um, to come and attend and know that it's going to be spread out. Um, and so that that's what we're continuing to do. And, you know, all we ask is people to continue being flexibility on our side and your side and just have that constant communication. Oh, Michelle, yeah. for everyone else, could you talk a little bit about how our pre-con was set up? Because I want to use that pre-con setup forever. I, I don't Absolutely. want that to go away. That was just genius on y'all's part. Absolutely. That's a great segue. So for um, our pre-con, you know, it's usually a very formal setting. You're in a, you know, a hollow square. What we did is we set up high boys from every department into a very big, broad room. And each person, six feet apart, of course, would, the planner would come up and the person in that department would tell them their responsibility, their role, and how they're going to impact their program. And so it was very, very engaging, but in a very safe manner. Um, but it really, really gave people just a really different idea and a different feel. Um, and I think it just gave it a little bit more of a casual feel, Wendy. It was very, it wasn't as formal. It wasn't stuffy. It was just a very different, and it got people, you know, um, engaged and really wanting to understand more and how we can help make the guests feel as comfortable as possible. And I also thought that it was a really good use of people's time once we spoke with them and dealt with, and, and sometimes there's just that awkward, okay, everybody who's not AV and catering leave. And, and, and so it's the setup going from high boy to high boy to high boy gave your staff, I thought, a graceful exit when, when they didn't need to be sitting there while we went through menus. So I, I just, I want to keep it forever. Anybody who's doing business with me in the future, I'm going to ask for it. <laughs> Beautiful. Lovely. So we're going to go to the next one or the next slide, excuse me. So we're going to do another poll real quick before we launch the poll. Um, just want to tell you more about Hopskip or we'll launch the poll already. So Hopskip, we're a platform again, designed by and for meeting event planners to source space and or room blocks at hotels for face-to-face -face events. So we're currently also offering um, to all our attendees and any of their colleagues that are interested as well, um, all of 2021 free for Hopskip when you purchase a pro subscription before uh, June 30th, so the end of next quarter. And if you're interested in learning more, please answer the, the poll we have up now and you can always reach out again after this as well. And we'd be happy and talk more about, learning about more about your organization and about how Hopskip could potentially partner with you to streamline. So um, we'll leave it up for just a couple more seconds. And then, there we go, perfect. And then let's go to our next slide, question number five. So I know everybody, on everybody's mind right now, it kind of goes along with the slides we had before but how did food and beverage change since the start of COVID-19? <laughs> Michelle, you wanna, you wanna start with that? And then we'll talk about my, my crazy menus. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, you know, um, like Luke and kind of when he spoke to, you know, we had to think very differently about the food and beverage, because when you think about bringing people together and networking and being communal, that is around food and beverage. So that was something that we had to eventually, we had to really drill down, kind of modifying the dining spaces um, in our outlets. So that was removing a, like a large portion of the furniture to really to provide the six feet of distancing. So that was pretty, pretty um, critical. Also, you know, this is pretty much the new norm now, but at the time we had um, put together some QR codes so people could read the menus off of their phones. And that was something that was coming together, but now it's, you kind of see that, you know, in restaurants and in hotels now, pretty much you're, you're going away from that paper. Um, and then, the piece that I think a lot of people just forget about the labor is everything that we um, offered and served has to be individually wrapped. So, and that's just to protect everyone again from having that less contact. Um, so that was something that that we had to put in from the group perspective. And then for, um, and then we eliminated self buffets. 
So mm-hmm. um, I don't know if, if Wendy wants to talk about how we ended up doing um, the, the lunches, but it ended up being a really, it worked out really, really, really great. But essentially, you know, every um, table in their general session was assigned a designated area to go pick up their lunch and, um, and or brew. And so you go to that same station. And so we had three designated areas where you could go and pick up your lunch or your a coffee break. And it, what it made it great was you didn't have any more than 30 people in that one area. And it was on a flow basis. So it made it really, really well that people were spread out and people were you know not on top of each other so it worked out really really well and and to follow up with that um one of the the way we color we color coded our food stations based on the linen on the tables um but for someone else if you don't have multicolored linens available to you like we did at the hyatt regency savannah you could use table flags um use stanchions to to color code and that worked beautifully. Um, the one thing I will say, it's important to remind your attendees that all food stations are identical. They had a really hard time believing that somebody wasn't getting something special at the blue station that wasn't available at the red station. Um, so just a communication note. Um, but the colored linens worked really, really well. And again, like I mentioned earlier, We also, for lunch in particular, we staggered the dismissal of our breakout sessions to prevent any bottlenecks. And so we were releasing people, you know, five minutes. And we also, again, lengthened the time period that it would normally take for to move people from downstairs at the breakout sessions to upstairs to our main ballroom that that we were utilizing. And so we really did have to build in that extra time just so that people didn't feel rushed and and they could say, oh no, you take the elevator and not feel like they were going to be late for something. Oh, and Jen, I'm I'm I know that y'all had some some issues around the special events and making sure that that we had um, certain protocols were followed. I'd love for you to talk about how you worked with the caterer because that was that the picnic was great. Absolutely. Um, first, with um, starting with our restaurants, we always do a dine around at GSAE, mm-hmm. and we were able to gather up what restaurants were indeed open, as well as how large a group they would take, what their seating was like, and again, the Savannah Pledge that they would be as cautious as possible. And we put that list out to the attendees so that anybody that was dining around could make um, reservations, which were suggested up front um, to make their reservation and and pick who they were going to go with in in smaller groups than usually, you know, the the big group of 10 plus in in each restaurant and whatnot. Um, But the the fun event was our, uh, the first night, opening night, the offsite event. Um, We had an idea, we had a great building, which was more than enough space. And we had the great idea to do a kind of a food truck event. And as we were rolling in, I think about three weeks out, the food trucks decided that that might not be the best event that would work for them. Um, There was a big concern about people taking pictures and posting pictures and having their names um, put out there that they weren't being socially responsible. So we ended up changing the event again, three weeks out and we made it a picnic theme. So we were able to, with the the size of the room, space out picnic tables. So some were on the floor and some were long picnic tables and and some were mid-size. We had games there, um, the cornhole, and and then the food was all given out. It was pre-packaged. It was all labeled. So as you came along, you kind of had your picnic basket to put in, um, well, actually the, the, attend, the food attendees would uh, put that in your basket so that there was um, just small touches to everything. It was, and it turned out to be great. Perfect. I love that idea of the picnic. I think that'd be really popular and everybody's gonna be copying you soon enough. Uh, let's go to our next uh, question, number six. So how did COVID-19 safety protocols and restrictions affect attendee networking? I know this is on every planner's top of their head. 
Um, no hugs. That was the biggest because That's we are hard. huggers at GSAE. And that was that was hard seeing everybody after so much time and not just being able to, to squeeze them a little. Um, but the attending networking, you know, everybody was just so conscious of it. The people that chose to attend the meeting really, you know, knew knew what to do and, and everybody along with the signage and everything that the hotel did, um, I think, you know, people were responsible and, and did the right thing. And I'll just, I'll just kind of elaborate on that too. I just, it, it's interesting. Um, I think along with the mask, I think that's just a different dynamic, but I think general, and especially in our industry, people want to connect and people want to do face-to-face -face meetings. They don't want to do this virtual, you know, um, you know, this substitute, this, this temporary band-aid. And so I know that like, I remember feeling the energy and it was just so long since we had had that, you know, face-to-face -face energy, whether you're wearing a mask, like we all were wearing a mask. So it's just, it was just the feeling of being connected. And I will tell you one thing about what I learned about myself is I don't thought, I don't think I remembered or thought that I read as much lips as I do, because it's funny when people have masks on, it's a whole different Ellen, you have to really raise your hearing and make sure that you're listening really, really, really well. So that was one thing that I feel like I've learned in this, you know, new normal terms of, of COVID on how to network and, and really having your listening skills on, but that's just, that's just me. Well, and there We've got a term for it now in GSA land. We call it doing the hokey pokey when you're at kind of that reception. Um, you know, you've got your mask and you have to remove your mask to eat and drink, though, obviously. And so we were telling people when when you're in this kind of larger than normal, more spread out circle, you're stepping back to take your drink or, or take your nibble and, and, you know, you're kind of balancing. And so we, we wanted to have more tables that people could set things down on and, and step away for a minute. Um, the other thing that we really noticed is there is a big difference in the behavior of work travel groups, mm. people that work together all the time and have already created a bubble. That was something unexpected for us that, that, I wish we'd been aware of before, but until you experience it. And so we would occasionally have these work groups that were together and people that were masked would feel uncomfortable coming up because they were a mm. little less cautious about it. Um, and, and so we developed some language by the, the second and last day um, to say, hey, remember, you gotta, if you're done eating and drinking, put the mask back on. It just makes everyone feel more comfortable. Um, but, but recognizing those work travel pods, um, I, I think is important for any planner, especially if you are doing a corporate meeting where um, you have larger groups, you know, five people traveling together versus just a couple. Perfect. And I know from, you know, the spotlight we did and which if anybody's interested, it's on our website, myhopskip.com underneath our blog section. But we, in that one, we actually interviewed attendees as well. And they couldn't say enough about how it was great being back together, finally getting network. Um, but, the, you know, the protocols, it took some time getting used to it, but they were very, you know, safe with them. Um, and they understood them and they were more than happy to follow them to be able to gather in person again. Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, they were all very impressed by the hotel, by the CVB, and of course by Wendy, um, with how everything was set up to have successful networking. There is one idea I wanted to share. We have a couple of groups who have used um, tastings, wine tastings, root beer tastings, beer tastings um, that, that have that, that enforced protocol of being apart in space, but being able to safely you know, do a tasting, but people are still together, but you've got enforced protocols. Um, and that particularly seems to have worked well for people that don't know one another as well. Um, so I just wanted to put that out in, in people's minds. And then I do want to urge everyone, there may be some things you just simply can't do right now. Um, Jen and I are forever sad that we had to let go of 
everyone being able to get fairy hair, which in case you don't know is tinsel in your hair. Um, and we also weren't able to have puppies come and visit to raise money for the Humane Society. Um, so again, you're going to have to be flexible and really think through what networking is going to work in a safe, still productive and engaging way. Beautiful. Thank you for throwing out that out there, uh, Wendy. And to move to our next slide, question number seven. As a result of COVID-19, how did the process of sourcing hotel space and rooms change? Were there more approval gates, contract negotiation, hotel communications, et cetera? Oh, um, that's all Jen first. <laughs> Go Jen and you. <laughs> Me. Um, well, they, hmm. Um, well, with the, everything had been sourced and the hotel had been chosen, uh, you know, before, before we had to move it from, from May to August. Um, so they're really, you know, every, everything was done so far ahead of time. There were no COVID precautions at that time. Um, but once we moved in and tried to, you know, wanted to keep the meeting and had many, many conversations with uh, back and forth with Wendy, how can we do this? Can we do this? How many people will come? I think the, the answer was that GSA really wanted to hold a meeting and it didn't matter at that time, whether it was 10 people or, or 200 people, um, maybe not 10, but um, you know, they, we wanted to get together and wanted to, to move it forward. So um, basically after, you know, the, the hotels were contracting and everything, it was really up to Michelle to kind of uh, change, you know, what she, what they needed to do to make everything COVID safe. So I'll turn it over to her. <laughs> well, I you know, well, at that point, what was interesting was, you know, like everything was intact. The contract had been signed. It was at this point, how can we work and partner with GSAE for, for the attendees to feel safe and comfortable traveling? Um, and this was in August. This was still very, very, very early. We had this, I mean, we had probably t under 10 groups underneath um, our belt that had come and done a, a program at our hotel and nothing at, to this level or this size um, yet. So it was really, it came down to cleanliness and what we were doing and the safety measures. That was the most critical component is we have to do this the right way and the best way, because if we don't, like we just have to continue looking forward to, to having safe meetings. That's how our, our industry is gonna keep moving forward. And so I think that was the biggest thing was the, the, the key word I think that we used throughout this, this the whole time in communication was flexibility. Mm -hmm. Is you know, we know that your numbers are not what is on that contract. We know that we don't know and Wendy's like, I don't know what our attendees are going to look like. I know that they did a survey and you can pull people, but things change. And so I think adaptability and flexibility are just, you know, super key um, in going through all of this process. And as we are moving forward and we're, we're starting to see some light at the, the end of this tunnel and we're moving forward to, to having bigger meetings, I, I think that that's really, really important is the flexibility and the adaptability for sure. And you know, from, from our standpoint, again, this, this was a contract we had signed several years out Correct. Um, and, and being able to work with the hotel and having the buy-in of the entire Savannah community, as well as the GSA community to, to be committed to. And, and for us, it was really important to model what a safe meeting looked like and to provide that back out. And I know someone in chat, ours is actually at gsae.org. And it's under our COVID resources, which is directly under the banner as soon as you go to our homepage. But as far as processing um, out RFPs right now, we're actually in an RFP process for 22, 23, and 24 um, that's just concluded. We've just gotten the proposals back. And I got to tell you, we and our community, we're telling people you got to play fair here. I think it's really important for planners to understand that yes, a hotel wants to be flexible with you. A CVB will back you with every bit of their weight and experience and expertise, but you can't be unreasonable. It simply is not fair to the hotel. It's not fair to the city. 
you need to understand that nobody in this economic recovery is going to be able to give you every new clause that you want. They've got a herd of corporate attorneys behind them saying that's just not a good liability. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just want to caution everybody. We're still in the newest phases of seeing how all this trickles out. As I said, I would love my pre-con to forever look that way. I know my room sets sustainability wise, probably won't. Um, So I just, again, everybody play fair. There is always going to be a buyer's or a seller's market and you want to maintain the relationships that you've got. It's just for GSA's community, that is so key is playing fair and being reasonable on both sides. Perfect. And I'll get off my soapbox. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, and just to chime in on that, I think, you know, your event really just showed how ever more important it is to have great partners with the local mm-hmm. CBB, with the local hotelier like Michelle from the Higher Regency Savannah, mm-hmm. and how those relationships are more important than ever now, but going forward in sourcing, especially in this new climate that we're dealing with. Right. So let's move to the next slide. Question number eight, is there anything you wish you did differently when preparing for the event? You want me to go first? Do you want to go first, Wendy? You go first. Okay, so I will tell you, um, we, I thought we had a really good um, communication open line, and I think we did a really great job on the pre-planning and even the executing, um, executing. but the, probably the one thing that I think that I wish we had done a little bit differently is we wanted to um, just really delight our guests, and so we had created these buttons um, so people can actually see what we looked like because we were wearing masks all the time. And that was something that um, we were really excited about, but I wish we had shared that with um, Wendy and her team um, closer or more in advance. So then the all the attendees that were there could also do that. Um, so you could just see people's faces because wearing a mask all day, you, you almost forget what people look like. And so that was probably my biggest, I wish we had communicated that earlier. So that was my, that's my little feedback. I, I love what you did though, Michelle, um, with the Hyatt's, all of the staff had a picture of themselves on a, um, on a lapel pin or a, a kind of a, a badge so that, yeah. So even their show. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> that's my sales manager right there. <laughs> but it, but it was great because, you know, you do have these masks on, yet people could see your smiling face. And I just thought that was such a, a great added extra touch. So we we will, depending on, 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 and GSAE is moving forward with our annual meeting as if we have all these protocols in place. And so there's a button making machine sitting in my Amazon cart right now. Um, but the, it was just a fabulous idea. But a couple of the other things, that again, more of those verbal reminders to folks of, of safety protocols of, and you know, we had the app, we had a rolling PowerPoint, we had signage, but just the verbal reminders. And it was so important for us that our leadership, because each of them emceed kind of a portion of, of the general sessions, those leaders embraced swiping between the the microphone um, with a Clorox wipe and embrace Uh making a big deal of of moving aside when someone else came up to the stage Um, and preparing them I think was something that went really really well and they truly embraced modeling the behavior that we wanted to see in our attendees and I think that was really important and then um, I will say I will make some changes to our our check-in registration processes. Um, Again, because of those masks, I would pay more attention to whose arrival is coming. And and we could have done that based on, we have our hotel list, of course. We know who's checking in on a certain day. But it was almost because people were no longer handing you your name tag. People are no longer handing you your learning journal or your swag bag there was a little bit of that warmth that, that was missing. Um, and so we've already made some changes to, 
you know, make sure that people are pointing to your name tag and telling you exactly where it is and just projecting a little more warmth that you don't realize you're missing until you, you realize, oh, I can't, I can't hand that to somebody. Um, and the other thing we did, somebody asked earlier on chat about temperature checks. And so we did not do mandatory temperature checks, nor did we do um, the heart rate or oxygen rate but we had them available at registration. And we realized that our volunteers, including staff, needed some practice. Those infrared temperature gauges, they are not intuitive. And you get a little panicky when it doesn't immediately come up. So those are some things that I would absolutely do differently as far as preparing my volunteers for that check-in registration and how that should go. Um, so we learned a lot. <laughs> I wanted to add one thing about not doing it, um, what we did differently, I should say. Um, at the beginning of the conference, we had our mayor welcome GSAE, and he just hit a home run speech. They had, people were in tears. It was, it was so wonderful. But he just had, you know, the back of the city just saying, you know, we're here for you, and we do have these, these safe safety standards and we want to make this successful and um, I mean it was it was just it was it was great and so the thing I would do differently is now I want him to speak at like all my conferences <laughs> coming to Savannah because he did such a great job. Perfect all amazing answers and we'll move to the next slide. So this we're going to launch a poll with this as well regarding, um, you know, about the on-site testing um, and what you know, protocols you wanna have an effect around that. So we're gonna launch a poll now. Uh, please check all that apply, but it really goes along with, you know, managing liability for in-person events. And if you do waivers, COVID test results, uh, prior to the event, on-site testing, or maybe a vaccination certificate going forward. And we can be done with that. We can close the poll, show you this information. Again, we'll, we'll put this information on uh, more hopskit materials as well, so you'll be able to have it. Great. And then I know someone mentioned this in the chat as well. You know, the GSAE's annual event was executed during August of 2020. Um, I mean, things have obviously changed since August, to, and we're almost in April now of 21. Vaccinations are going up, and, uh, you know, uh, restrictions are easing. So compared to how the event, annual event was held in 2020 in August, what changes do you all see for planning and holding face-to-face events going forward as you know the pandemic hopefully winds down and you know restrictions are eased? Who wants to start? Do you want me to? I can. You start, okay. Wendy. <laughs> so for our June second through fourth meeting in Chattanooga, we are not asking for waivers. We do have an acknowledgement. Um, and again, in our meetings toolkit, you'll see several articles from Tenenbaum Law Group has been fantastic with sharing some of their um, articles, their opinions that they've given. I am in no way, shape or form an attorney. I, I, I know enough about HIPAA to stay out of trouble, but for us, <laughs> When we did, for example, our health and happiness survey afterwards, asking folks, you know, did you have any symptoms? And we were, you know, really literally did not put out a press release until we were certain we had passed a two week period and knew we weren't a super spreader event in any way, shape or form. We don't want to inadvertently create medical records for our attendees, um, period. And so we have been very careful to use on our health and happiness survey. It's anonymous. Um, there is a very specific thing of if you answered yes to any of this section, please contact Wendy so that we can talk about how to keep our community safe and start a contact tracing. Um, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that those things will still need to be in place for, for this coming June. Um, we're still planning the same spacing. We're still planning right now. Um, our location actually has a city, a countywide, excuse me, mask mandate. So I do see some things still being in place. But again, we don't use waivers. 
our whole thing has been geared around we don't want to ever be accused of being negligent with the safety or the health of our attendees. And so everything, the Hyatt's visit Savannah and GSAE did previously was to keep people safe and provide a great educational experience. Those goals are not changing for this, for 2021. Um, so again, I'm not a waiver fan, but I understand other people that are, nor GSAE is a nurturing community supportive community. I cannot ever envision a moment in which we will separate vaccinated and unvaccinated attendees. That's simply part and parcel is not who we are. I understand it might be somebody else's culture. We're not going down that road. Again, soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's culture is different. Everybody needs are different. I have a you know, a 240 person meeting, uh, usually. Um, I understand that very different concerns when you're talking 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. Right, we um, held right before Wendy's meeting in um, August, we did have a Georgia association here um, that was considered a citywide. It was smaller than it, than it um, usually is, but they still came and used the, the convention center and, you know, they, they had all the protocols in place and the spacing, you know, they had to curtail their program to meet what spacing they could have for breakouts and the six feet apart and, and whatnot. But the changes moving forward and, and going to, going to social events, as um, I think people now are just so, um, they're so accustomed to wearing masks and using hand sanitizer that, um, you know, that kind of comes along with it. And, you know, just looking at the bus situation, um, the, the offsite events, you know, just how we can do them differently. I think the norm is, you know, it rounds or a sit down dinner and we've really gone outside the box now looking at our events and doing different kind of themed events where, you know, maybe it's, it's given us a little more thought to be creative, which is, a good thing moving forward. Um, the, the governor just um, announced that he's relaxing our restrictions as of April 1st. So we'll, um, we'll see what, what happens next. And I can just kind of recap and, and, and um, end on that note. I, I think the biggest thing is, I think that we all have to think differently. I mean, we've all been through a whole year of this and it's, it's changed all of our worlds and we just have to kind of pivot to the direction that, that it's going to. I think that, um, you know, what we have found to be successful that, you know, we, we used to want to be in a different room every day and change up the meeting room and go to a different meeting room for a different. And I think that's going to be changing. I think the sets are going to be changing. I think the, the rounds of 10 and the rounds of 12 are, are gone. I, I think it's always going to be, um, rounds are eight or less. I just think people want their space because we've had to have space, more space, right? So I think that, that um, that's that, that's where the direction we're going in. And I, I don't know, this was not um, directly impacted. GSAE was very planned very well in advance, but what we're seeing in face-to-face -face meetings moving forward currently is everything seems to be um, very, very sh more short term. And it seems to be the even the planning and the, the planning process is on a much um, shorter turnaround. So that's where we're seeing um, probably the biggest impacts now, I think so. But um, we love GSAE. We cannot wait to have them back. Um, we, we learned a lot. I feel like, um, from the Visit Savannah to GSAE to the Hyatt Receive Savannah, we all like literally collaborated and came together. And we were just really excited that we put together a really safe, effective and successful event. And that's what I, we're all, I think the most proud of is, um, and I know Wendy, she pulled everyone on the front end and on the back end. And that we were just, were, we were excited that we hosted a really, really safe event. And that's the most important, so. That's where I'll leave it. Perfect. Well, that's amazing answers as usual from everybody. Um, 
go to our next slide, which will be our last slide. Again, we want to thank you all for attending previous webinars as well as this webinar today. Again, just one last time to let you know who we are as Hopskip, other than putting out great webinars. Um, but we also are offering our platform uh, for all of 2021 free when purchasing our pro subscription before June 30th. Um, again, we're a platform to source and bulk hotel room blocks and or space um, for live events. And if you're interested, please uh, reach out if you didn't answer the poll. Um, if you're also interested in submitting topics for future webinars, just like our platforms driven by its users, our webinars are driven by its attendees because you know what's the next hottest topic you want addressed. So please feel free to do so. And thank you all again for attending, but also big shout out to Michelle, Jennifer and Wendy. Thank you all for you know, getting together to do this and providing this asset to our meetings and events community, because I know we're all so tight knit and this information is gonna be so invaluable now, but going forward and it will all be sent out next week as a recording. So if any of us want to share it, rewatch it again, you'll have it. But thank you all from the panelists to the attendees uh, you know, for coming here today. And that's it. So again, if anybody wants to reach out with any ideas, please feel free to give us a uh, shout out via email or call. And we'd love to chat further and we look forward to having everybody on the next webinar. And thank you again to everyone.